Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we'll be tackling the ADR1 plus 3 fault ECAM. The first flight crew member that notices cancels the master warning. The pilot flying should follow the Airbus golden rules of fly, navigate, and communicate. In this instance, the autopilot and auto thrust have both disconnected, so the pilot flying will be manually flying the aircraft. With this fault, the autopilot and auto thrust are disconnected and normal law is lost. The aircraft is now in alternate law. CM1's PFD loses its speed and altitude indications. The ISIS indications are also lost. CM2 now assumes the role of PF if they weren't already before. With the auto thrust lost, the thrust locked FMA appears. An engine thrust locked ECAM message flashes every five seconds. A thrust levers move ECAM message is also displayed. In this case, a single chime is heard every five seconds along with a flashing master caution light until the thrust levers are moved. Once the flight path is safely under control by the pilot flying, the pilot monitoring can request clear auto flight. Clear auto flight. The pilot monitoring announces NAV ADR1 plus 3 fault and confirms the failure by inspecting overhead panel and or the SD pages. In this case, two fault lights should be present on the ADR1 and 3 push buttons. Notice that on the cruise page, the TAT, SAT, and ISA indications are replaced by amber crosses. The crew consider if any OEBs are relevant. If not, then the pilot flying announces ECAM actions. The first action is to set the ATC transponder to System 2. This makes sense as CM2 is now flying the aircraft because their instruments are the only reliable ones. This line is not monitored by the aircraft. This means that the blue line will not clear even if the correct action is taken. Next, we must switch off the faulty ADRs. ADRs, ADR1 off. ADRs, ADR3 off. Clear nav? Clear nav. Flight controls, alternate law, protections lost. Maximum speed is 320 knots. Clear flight controls? Clear flight control? Auto flight, auto thrust off. Clear auto flight? Clear auto flight. Status. Stop ECAM. At this point, both consider any normal checklists or incomplete flows, any potential system resets, or any additional procedures that are applicable. Maximum speed is 320 knots. Approach procedure. For landing, use flap 3. GPWS landing flap 3 push button on. Due to the fact that the predictive functions of the GPWS are inhibited for aircraft equipped with T3 CAS, the GPWS terrain fault light illuminates in the case of an ADR 1 plus 3 fault. If this occurs, the flight crew should switch off the GPWS terrain push button. Landing gear, gravity extension. Approach speed is VREF plus 10 knots. The landing distance procedure, apply. Alternate law, protections are lost. When the landing gear is down, the aircraft goes into direct law. Both PFDs are on the same FAC. The inoperative systems are the flight control protections, ADR 1 plus 3, autopilots 1 and 2, the auto thrust, CAT 2, the rudder travel limiter, and the GPWS. Remove status. Remove status. ECAM actions complete. The ECAM is inhibited at multiple stages. Firstly, between initial electrical power and starting the first engine. Secondly, between 80 knots on takeoff and liftoff. Thirdly, from touchdown to 80 knots on landing. And lastly, for five minutes after the second engine is shut down. In the case of a simultaneous failure of the ADR and IR, apply the ADR fault procedure before the IR fault procedure. Flight control normal law is lost. Pitch alternate law preserves the neutral static stability. All protections, except maneuver protections, are lost. The speed is limited to 320 knots due to the loss of the high-speed protection. 
For ADR1 plus 3 fault, the operating speed is now driven by FAC2 on both PFDs. Let's have a quick look at the gravity gear extension procedure. For this failure, the landing gear safety valve is now controlled closed. This means the landing gear retraction is inoperative and the gear extension must be performed by gravity. The flight crew should seek landing clearance before extending the landing gear via gravity. The fuel penalty factor is approximately 180%, which means that the aircraft will be burning 2.8 times the normal fuel burn. Let's apply the QRH procedure. Rotate the gravity gear extension handle clockwise three times until reaching the mechanical stop. The aircraft is now in direct law. Place the landing gear lever in the down position. Check the gear down indications on the wheel SD page. At this point, the same drill can be run to clear these ECAM messages and the status page can be reviewed. The notable differences are the maximum speed of 250 knots, the increased fuel consumption, and the aircraft being in direct law. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial on the ADR 1 plus 3 ECAM procedure.